The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus asked, What is the realm of God like? And to what should I compare it? It is like a mustard seed that someone took and tossed in the garden, and it grew and became a tree. And the birds of the air made nests in its branches. Speaking again, Jesus said, To what should I compare the realm of God? It is like a yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'll invite the congregation to be seated. Well, grace to you and peace from God, our Creator and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I want to talk uh, this morning about wisdom. And as I was thinking about wisdom, as I was preparing for this sermon this morning, a quote kept coming into my mind. Wisdom is holding two contradictory truths in our mind simultaneously. Hope and despair. Now, I had to Google and look up where this quote came from, and it actually is a line from a movie, go figure. This movie, First Reformed, written and directed by Paul Schrader. The line is given by Reverend Ernst Toller as he tries to console an environmental activist who is despairing about what is to come for the earth due to climate change. Now, throughout this film, the characters struggle with this, how to hold two contradictory truths in their minds, despair and hope, love and hatred, humility and boastfulness. And I'm grateful to director Paul Schrader. He's an Episcopalian himself. While many of his characters fall deeper into confusion, despair, and hardship, there is one that stands out for her wisdom and discernment. The pregnant mother, Mary Mansana, she remains composed and determined through all the difficulties that she faces in her life. And I don't think it's a coincidence, I imagine, that she shares a name with Mary, mother of Christ, and that her last name, if you break it up into two words, translates from Latin into a healthy mind. And I promise I didn't read any spoilers or find that. That was just watching on my own. So you can imagine how fun it is to watch movies with me. Two contradictory truths side by side in our mind. To go all back to the sermon that we heard last week from Pastor Jamie, it seems a bit ridiculous. Yet this phenomenon is true throughout the Bible, and it is evident in our gospel this morning. Jesus describes the kingdom of God in two distinct ways, like yeast being kneaded into bread and like a mustard seed that grows into a tree. Oftentimes, we think of these things in positive ways, right? The kingdom of God starts like a tiny mustard seed or a small amount of yeast, and it grows into a strong tree or a delicious loaf of bread. But in Jesus' time, however, this connotation may not have been so positive for those who would have heard it. A mustard seed growing into a tree meant that soon the whole area would be covered in mustard plants because they are extremely resilient. And this meant that there would be less space for more important crops to grow. 
There's also mention of birds. And while we might think of birds as companions, these would be a problem once again for farmers as birds would scoop up the seeds that they scattered and eat them. There are crops not growing but becoming food for these birds. Yeast as well was an often used metaphor for sin. In the Hebrew Bible, we see many instances where God commands the people of Israel to throw out and get rid of all of the yeast they have and consume unleavened bread instead, much like the unleavened bread that we will be served at this altar today. Why then would Jesus compare the kingdom of God to yeast or the mustard seed? While this passage is contested by many scholars, I would posit that this is an example of Jesus breaking through the binaries of the world and demonstrating just how countercultural God's love really is. And if we think about Jesus' ministry, we know we can think of these examples. How often did Jesus dine with those who were considered, considered evil? How many times was Jesus at odds with those that were deemed the most holy or righteous? Jesus completely overturns the apple cart. Jesus lives into these contradictions and his life is perhaps the most easy example, both fully human and fully God. How can this be unless our whole understanding of what is possible is both completely surpassed and transformed by God? In Isaiah... The passage, again, demonstrates the God brings hope in the midst of utter despair, where you would expect to see hope the least. That no matter how lost the situation is, no matter how dry the desert is, no matter how remote the wilderness is, God brings life and love into those places as well. We are encouraged as we look into the future for this promised deliverance and salvation to look back to Abraham and Sarah who were brought hope in times of despair as well. Looking backwards to be reminded of what is to come. It can feel like up is down, life is left, when we're thinking it's right, and all the ground that we stand on is shaking. God's love is earth-shattering, mind-bending, and all-encompassing. So this wisdom, where does it leave us this morning? Martin Luther, throughout his writings, holds two seemingly paradoxical truths up. We are sinners, and so we must be justified by faith. Thus, we are made saints in Christ. Saint and sinner at the same time, simultaneously. And in this Lenten season, when we reflect on our sins and the sins of the world, So often Christians have tried to measure their sin against one another or proclaim their goodness over others in the world. Instead, let this time of reflection not be one of judgment of our own actions, but a reflection on how we affect one another and our communities. This honest reflection can help us move forward, always with uncertainty, no doubt, but more thoughtful on how we impact one another. Wisdom 
is the key to each step that we take on this journey to examine the complexities that God has created and to recognize with humility we only capture a glimpse of the facets that God has designed. It's impossible to fully understand when we do good or when we do bad. We evaluate on our own understanding, but God has a scope more than can even be described with words. Yet these glimpses provide us with insight into what the realm of God can look like here on earth. It's not constrained by arbitrary binaries, but it breathes with love and with liberation. Wisdom leads us to understand the needs of one another, not seeking merely fairness, but to seek for a world where everyone's needs, regardless of what those are, are fully met. This is a complicated task for us, but we take it one day at a time. We look back for clues on how we can better serve one another in the future and all along the way. Each step, we ask for God's guidance. Guidance not on how expansive God's love is, for we know that answer is past any limit we can possibly imagine, but on how we, despite our sinful nature, can best be God's hands and feet in the world for others. That is real wisdom. To know that we can make a difference, even when we also know we are limited by our own nature. To be sure that God can use our lives despite our restraints, and that God will empower us when we feel most hopeless. Wisdom can lead us forward even when we continue to be stuck in the limitations the world has convinced us that God has. So as we continue and we wrap up this season of Lenten limitations and liberations. Next week, we will be following behind Jesus as he rides into Jerusalem. We will follow Jesus to the cross at Golgotha on Good Friday, and we'll follow Mary Magdalene on her way to the empty tomb on Easter. But today, let us follow Sophia. God personified wisdom, given the name and form of woman in the book of Proverbs. Let Sophia lead us and guide us to be discerning in our lives and in our search for justice. Let her enlighten those to the plight of the marginalized, guide us all to a more full and loving form of community, and remind us of her beautiful creation that we are a part. So as I pray now, I will pray using the words from Proverbs chapter 8, verses 32 through 35, where wisdom talks about her role in creation and in our lives. Let us pray. And now, my children, listen to me. Happy are those who keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise, and do not neglect it. Happy is the one who listens to me, watching daily at my gates, waiting beside my doors. For whoever finds me finds life and obtains favor from God. Amen.